Welcome to this new training series about how to mix live music. We're going to cover many techniques for getting the most out of a mixing console, whether it's analog or digital, and how to produce a sound that is satisfying to the musicians and the audience, and of course you, the sound engineer. We're going to be working closely with Yamaha's MGP32X hybrid analog console and the TF3 digital mixing console. Both feature 24 mic preamps, additional stereo input channels, built-in effects units, some graphic EQs, compressors, and connection with various Apple iOS devices. You will learn how to use each feature of these mixing consoles and how to apply them practically to your regular music mixing jobs. We have lots of tips, tricks, advice, and experience to share with you, spread across more than 20 short video tutorials. We're going to cover topics like gain structure, how to use EQ, panning, groups, using auxes for stage monitoring, compression, effects, running a sound check, and recording your mix. When you know what you're doing, mixing live music becomes a whole lot more enjoyable and creative. But first, let's remind ourselves why do we need to mix music? Well, generally, it's because the size or shape of the venue is not suitable for the performance to be heard clearly by the whole audience purely acoustically. In addition, the sounds produced by each instrument or voice may not be evenly balanced, so every performer will need varying levels of assistance for the group to be heard in a cohesive manner. For example, a solo violin will need more amplification than a trumpet, while an electronic keyboard will be completely reliant upon amplified sound. Have you ever been at a pop or rock concert when the sound suddenly stops? The bigger the gig, the bigger the problem but often the entertainment is totally ruined until the sound returns. Even when there are just 50 people in a room, it can be difficult to listen to an unamplified voice. PA, public address, has become an important part of our lives. Whenever a number of people gather for entertainment, worship, learning or debate, and whenever there are two or more sources of sound at the same time, we need a mixer. Have you ever been to an event that was almost ruined by a poor sounding mix? Perhaps too much howling feedback, maybe vocals that couldn't be heard clearly, or one instrument that was so loud it masked the sound of the others? Well, be determined to not let that happen to any event you're working at. Mixing can even add an extra dimension to the musical art form, enhancing the sounds with extra dynamism, warmth, character, mystery, and imagination. As the musicians play their instruments, a good sound engineer can play the band bringing the best out of them and adding more. Be mindful that the mixing console is only a small part of the complete sound system. It will not make an instantly good sound if any of the other components are faulty or of low quality. So what are these other important elements of the sound system? Well, if the musicians and musical instruments are already making a good sound, that's a great start. Then there are the microphones. Are they the best types to use and in a good position to pick up the sound? All the cables must be in good condition. They are the cause of most problems and failures. 
Do the amplifiers have enough power to provide a clear sound at the required sound pressure level? Are the loudspeakers suitable for the style of music? And are they pointing in the right direction towards the audience and away from the walls? Finally, the biggest influence is from the acoustics of the venue itself or the outside location. It can cause the greatest challenge for the sound engineer to overcome. And it's the one most difficult and costly item in this list to change. But for this series, we're going to assume that the other four elements are in good order. So we can focus on the central tool of the system, where the sound engineer will likely spend most time, the mixing console. But before we continue, let's consider what are our goals by mixing the live music? What are we trying to achieve? Who are we trying to please? I would argue that the first job is the performers. If they are comfortable with their sound, they will create a better sound, making it easier for you to deliver a good sound to the audience. Then, of course, we have to consider the audience and the event organizers. What are their expectations? And are they reasonable, safe and achievable? Should we aim to recreate the sound of the band just like their latest CD or download? Should we provide high energy sound to motivate the audience to dance? Should we provide a natural and faithful reproduction of the acoustic group on the stage? Should we make sure the vocals are always clearly heard so everyone can sing along? These are different styles of mixing that require slightly different approaches. We'll cover aspects of them as we go along. But always keep your goal in mind as you mix. In the next video, I'll give you tips for choosing the right mixing console for the job and we'll list the kind of tools you should always have available when working as a live sound engineer. See you then.